مساء الخير السيدة شبانة عزمي الفنانة الكبيرة من الهند السيد جاويد أختر المؤلف والكاتب والشاعر الكبير من الهند السيد سمير فريد الناكد السينمائي المصري اللي مش متعاج لأي تعرف ورئيس المهرجان الكاهرة للسينما الدولي أنا سعيد جدا إن إحنا كلنا مع بعض اليوم لمهلة جديدة لمهرجان الهند على دفاع النيل. I understand that many of our colleagues uh, may not, many of our friends may not understand Arabic, so if I can switch to English perhaps. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all uh, this evening to this new uh, installment of uh, the new uh, episode in our festival, um, India by the Nile. This is the largest festival that we have ever organized in Egypt. So it's a landmark in our uh, relationship with Egypt. My friends in the Ministry of Culture tell me that it's the largest festival that any country has organized in Egypt in the last few years, certainly after the 25th of January revolution. Uh, we're particularly happy that we have with us, somebody of the stature of um, Shabanaji, uh, with us this, this evening. And um, she doesn't need any introduction, not to Indians, not to Egyptians, and actually not to many film-loving audiences around the world. Uh, a lot of her work has been celebrated in Paris, in Venice, in Berlin, and elsewhere. She's been in Cairo before as a member of the jury at the Cairo International Fil Film Festival. I've been tracking as a fan of hers, her films from Angkor onwards, uh, and the last one that I saw was Godmother, which we will be seeing uh, uh, after this uh, conversation. But I want to switch away from cinema. I want to say that the reason that I admire Shabana is not just for her uh, cinematic uh, contribution, which is enormous, but for the values that she represents as an individual uh, the best of in the Indian tradition of tolerance, of respect for others, of the civility in conversation and debate. Um, just that representation of the idea of India that we hold so dear. Shabanaji, I say it from the heart that if we had a few more, many more of you, India and the world would be a better place. And so there are many of your fans here uh, waiting to listen. They're not here to listen to me, so I will not uh, continue. Uh, they are also going to be here to listen to Javed Sab tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll keep that, uh, we'll save that pleasure for, for tomorrow, uh, e tomorrow evening. Uh, but uh, we have, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the conversation because uh, uh, my friend Samir Farid, who curiously is one of the very few people from my first assignment here in 1984, uh, in the Arab world, Samir is probably the leading film critic who has been writing on uh, Arab uh, and international cinema. Um, his little grouse with me is, why don't you make more films of the kind that Shabana makes? Why do you make so much of commercial cinema and so little of art cinema? And that's a, a, a conversation that Samir and I have frequently had. Um, but uh, now in his uh, new capacity as the head of the, the president of the prestigious Cairo International Film Festival, we certainly hope that we're going to do some exciting things uh, together. Um, already people are talking that uh, since Samir has come to the uh, uh, Cairo International Film Festival, he's brought a new dynamism. He's brought young blood into the uh, Cairo International Film Festival. So, ahlan sahlan ya Samir, ya Sadiqi al Aziz min zaman. And uh, Madam, we are well, delighted to welcome you on behalf of Dr. Duraya Sharfadeen from the Ministry of Information. Thank you very much. And please uh, convey to the minister, when I met her uh, about a month back and I briefed her about this uh, ambitious uh, cultural festival, I said, we need your support because in a sense, we are uh, taking a gamble. Uh, we are bringing some of the finest Indian artists uh, at a time uh, when uh, there are difficulties. Uh, 
And so uh, we will need your help in projecting and uh, getting the word out about the festival. And uh, the uh, support that we've received from the Ministry of Information has been really outstanding. Uh, and of course, to all the private channels and the private media as well. Uh, because of the media, because of the support that we got, every event that we've had so far has been way beyond any expectations that we had. Uh, we were at Alexandria last night for the Bollywood musical, and it was houseful. And uh, I think Dr. Inas, the chairperson of the Cairo Opera House, was telling uh, Sanjoy Roy that uh, they haven't seen this kind of a, a response to any event in recent years. So thank you all for being here. And um, we will now see a small audiovisual on uh, uh, Shabana's work before uh, I hand over to Sanjoy and the team. Thank you. Well, Anna, I said it was said. أدعو كل من ناقد الفني السينمائي المصري الكبير الأستاذ سمير فريد على خشبة المسرح وأيضا الأستاذ سانجوي روي المخرج الهندي الكبير أيضا ومؤسس شركة تيم ورك الهندية لنبدأ هذه المحادثة اليوم. Please may I invite his 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 excellency also I mean Miss Shabana Azmi to be on stage for the conversation. It's always a pleasure to have uh, Shabana Azmi grace any occasion. And I remember two years ago when we invited her to come to America, she turned around and said to me, why do you keep taking me to the most boring places? I want to go to an exciting place. Take me to Egypt. So here we are, Shabana Azmi, Yahweh Bhai in Egypt. Um, thank you very much for joining us. And I'm going to leave most of the conversation uh, to both of you. But just to start off, I'd like to take off from something that uh, His Excellency said in his introduction to you, which was, uh, he said, we'd like to see much more art cinema. Today, in India, uh, the parallel cinema movement, as you know, uh, has actually merged with the mainstream cinema. Much of parallel cinema today has become, or uh, found its uh, place finally uh, in the mainstream with uh, many innovative scripts, wonderful young directors, great new uh, actors. Most importantly, unlike earlier where films used to sit in cans waiting for distribution, these have found distribution. And not only have they found distribution, they made a huge mark in the Indian box office scene. Uh, just last year, 1983, six such films have been uh, really exemplary in, in the kind of performances that they've reached. And I wanted to ask Shabana because for many of you, as you may know, Shamanaji is actually, in a sense, a co-founder of the parallel cinema movement uh, in India. Uh, she's, uh, she's the only person who's crossed effortlessly between both what we used to call mainstream cinema and parallel cinema. Even when parallel cinema directors uh, and actors gave up hope uh, in that particular form, uh, she stuck to doing roles uh, which, in a sense, ex exemplified her philosophy. And I'd just like to ask her, how did that happen? Was it a struggle? And where do you see parallel cinema, or what we call parallel cinema, moving forward? Um, actually, Sanjay, I totally agree with you that um, a lot of people seem to ask the question, where has parallel cinema disappeared? I don't think it has disappeared at all. I think it has taken on a different avatar. So if you look at the 70s, in mid 70s, when I first started with Sean Benegal's Uncle, that was a very successful film. It was also liked by the critics a lot. And because it was so successful, it won many national awards. It was also financially a success. A lot of films could be made in its wake. And um, so really, Sean Benegal is considered the harbinger of the parallel cinema. Today, if you look at what is happening in Indian cinema, the parallel cinema as we understood it, which was largely based in rural India, that seems to have disappeared somewhere. But instead, we have the small town which is making its presence <coughs> felt. And we are seeing that a lot of younger filmmakers 
are no longer catering to the lowest common denominator. They are not looking to make films that are acceptable to all. When you look at the lowest common denominator, you have to dumb down your film so that everybody can like it. But today it has been discovered that it's possible to make films for the multiplex, make films for the B and C class centers as they're called, or make films that are liked by metropolitan audiences, and yet you are able to make money. And so we have a whole spate of independent films with young filmmakers who are making films about daring subjects, about <coughs> different subjects, and uh, are in fact also being successful apart from being critically acclaimed. So according to me, this really is the happiest time in mm -hmm. Hindi uh, cinema because lots of changes have happened and so I really welcome this period. I don't think that parallel cinema has disappeared at all. It's take on a different of that. That's yours. There is no translation to Arabic, or, or, or I translate, or what? <laughs> Does anybody it's need okay. a translation into Arabic, or it's English is okay? Okay. I think your mic is off. For you. Yes. Hello. Uh, first, I would like to to say something about this uh, festival, about uh, uh, this r great ambassador, because he is really. Uh, uh, the real ambassador is uh, is ambassador for 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 all the country for culture, not only for uh, meeting with uh, with politicians and uh, so uh, I think he, uh, my friend Suri is, is is a real example for ambassador in the world. Uh, this festival also is a, a real event. I mean, uh, I cannot imagine. I I think that he will take care of uh, of cinema and theater and arts and. But not to that extent. Not to not to have a, a, such a, a big festival and uh, with all artists and uh, literature and everything. Farid, but you know that he protests about being uh, slotted into this culture thing. He yeah. says, "I'm an economist. You yeah. know, my business is about <laughs> economy." But he seems to do more with culture and the economy of culture. So you know, thank Actually, you. Actually, this is uh, normal from. Uh, because uh, the, the relation between India and Egypt is very old, and it's uh, and uh, there is something uh, hidden and something appears, but there is a very deep relation. I mean, uh, uh, for cinema, we have the same uh, feeling. I mean, uh, the Egyptian cinema started when Al Ward Al Beda, the White Rose of Abdul Wahab, was in uh, 1933. That was the start of the industry. Uh, not the start of the first film, but the start of the industry. That means it was the first film of Abdul Wahab, the singer and, uh, and the musician. And it was also the first Egyptian film to be shown in the whole Arab world. Oh. The first one. That's why it's considered the start of the industry. Okay. <laughs> uh, because of music, singing. The same in, in India. Uh, the first film was, uh, I think, uh, 10 hours or more. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. about seven and a half hours. Yes, seven hours. <laughs> uh, because th through uh, passion to music and cinema and uh, singing. Uh, m many of our films yeah. still seem like they're seven and a half hours, <laughs> <laughs> even though they're much shorter. Uh, then it is, there is a lot of relation that I need uh, hours to speak about. Uh, the second thing about uh, uh, Shapana, she was modest enough not to, not to mention that uh, she said that her first film won many prizes, but she didn't mention that the one of these prizes was the best, best actress <laughs> for her first, uh, her first, first uh, for her first film. Uh, she is actually not only represent uh, acting, uh, the art of acting. Uh, her father was a boy. Her, your mother was actress, and your brother is a cinematographer, you, you, yeah, and your, your husband is a writer. That's then you are actually co collect all uh, arts and uh, literature in one person. <laughs> uh, uh, also, for the, uh, the uh, when she when, when you mentioned that she made uh, 120 films, 
uh, we have uh, actresses in Egypt and actors made more than 30, 300 films. My God. <laughs> <laughs> then it is not, uh, I mean, it is the same, uh, the same attitude of, of the industry, not like Europe or, uh, yes. or America. Uh, Indian cinema is the biggest in the world. I mean, biggest, uh, no, no other country has uh, uh, 1,000 films every year. And uh, also, it is the biggest democracy. No other country has uh, eight uh, hundred and five million voters. Yes, water, yes. Yeah. this is uh, also an example of that. Uh, the big number doesn't mean it is difficult to have a real election and a real democracy. And uh, we are now looking to India and in Egypt like an example also to, <coughs> to, to, to reach uh, that uh, level of, uh, of life, of freedom, although we know all the, the problems. Uh, the, the third thing I want to mention is, uh, is uh, Indian cinema of today. I, am, I, I agree with you totally that this is the first golden age of Indian cinema. Since the last 20 years, uh, not, not, not because of the parallel cinema, or because there were always a parallel cinema in India. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, from the 50s and 40s. But because uh, it goes out of, of India. I mean, it was a big, the biggest industry in the world, but actually closed clo in, in, in India, inside India. Then it, uh, the, the, I think that there is a kind of plan or very clever one that uh, since, uh, especially since the last 10 years, now the uh, Indian cinema is not, uh, not, not anymore a local cinema, only for Indians, but it is now a real international cinema. Uh, not everywhere, I mean, uh, the subject, even the, the <coughs> change the subject and the change the, the, uh, the styles and the, uh, Although they didn't lose their identity, their all own identity, but now they are. Uh, I, when I when I read that there is a, a society for the fan fans of uh, Shah Rukh Khan in Vienna, this is this is a real success. And, uh, uh, and for the relation with Egypt, we have a very complicated one because uh, it was, of course, uh, very popular films in Egypt in the 60s and 70s like all Arab countries and uh, but uh, here they, uh, they, 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 they are afraid of it, the distributors and the, the, the film industry in Egypt, they consider it uh, very... A threat. Yes, and uh, then they, 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 they have a very unfair <laughs> decision not to have more than five films every year in, in, in Egypt. In fact, the ambassador was saying to me the yeah. other day that I think some of your regulations are that you can import five films, it can only play for yeah. three weeks at a time. Yeah, oh yes, yeah, Because of, so what was the film, Naldeep, you mentioned? But, yeah. Marth ran for a hundred uh, weeks, a uh, non-stop, and uh, much of the Egyptian yeah. cinema then felt threatened I, I think this, with that. Uh, I think this uh, should, uh, must be finished. This, uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is unfair, and unfair for the Egyptian people. I mean. Uh, 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 why the, this is uh, even against the international uh, agreement? This is against freedom of expression. Yeah, so this is something that you must and, drive now and of in a democracy. And of trading, <laughs> also <laughs> freedom of trading also. <laughs> then and I, and I, we I, have I, a wonderful I, representative yeah. from the yes. information and broadcasting. Uh, no. the great, uh, he, I think, will take up the case as well. Not, not only me, but all, all the critics in Egypt and all the, uh, and maybe all, many of the filmmakers are against this uh, uh, discrimina discrimination of, of Indian cinema. I hope through such uh, festival and uh, uh, through the effort of uh, the ambassador, uh, uh, we will change this. <coughs> we must change it. You know, I think countries tend to feel threatened and much of this also happened in India earlier. We wouldn't allow Hollywood films to come in and when they yeah. did they came six or seven years later and now they're almost simultaneously uh, released in India and in fact what it has done has encouraged 
Indian cinema to raise their standards because the audiences now can see that there is something else available. And so similarly in other, in other countries where we say, no, we shouldn't let this uh, culture happen, we actually make a mistake. In fact, taking away from this, from film, uh, it was very interesting that when satellite television first um, started making its presence felt. We in India were really frightened that, you know, we are going to lose Indian out before. in Indian uh, culture, etc. The other, th the opposite happened. <coughs> in fact, they realized that they would need to dub all the foreign programs yes, yes. into Hindi if they wanted it to run. So I think we have expectations which are different and even, reality is even, different. Even in America, even in the States, That's right. it is a miracle to have a uh, French film in the uh, uh, in more than 20 or 25 uh, Screen. screens. I mean, it is everywhere, but, I, but I, I'm against this everywhere. <laughs> as, as a critic, as a, to defend the rights of the people to see all films from all the world in all countries. Uh, they need to translate, but very brief, in one minute. Yeah? احنا بنتكلم على حركة السينما الهندية علاقة السينما الهندية بالسينما في مصر والعكس يعني فال ان في مشكلة بالنسبة للأفلام الهندية انها قد نجحت جدا في الستينيات وفي السبعينات نجاح صاحق يعني وبقى في مثل شعبي اكيد كلكم عارفينه لما واحد يتكلم على واحد يقول له انت اقوى يقول لك ما انتش اقوى من سنجام yeah, that, that means you are not stronger than سنجام this is part of the Egyptian slang now <laughs> that Sangam was very popular, uh, yeah, very popular that uh, and very strong. That uh, now in the uh, in the common uh, lexical, yes, uh, they said you are not uh, you are strong, but not stronger than Sangam. Sangam. But the result is that the 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 وده مش موجود بقى ده موجود في الهند كمان ما هيش سهل انك تعرض فيلم اجنبي في الهند ولا سهل انك تعرض فيلم اجنبي في امريكا على اكبر سوق في العالم السينما الفرنسيه صعبت مليارات عشان توصل لل لل للسينما لاكثر من 20 30 شاشه في امريكا من 40 الف شاشه في امريكا 42 الف بالظبط ما عرفتش فدي مشكله عالميه بس المفروض انه انا كناقد او اي ناقد او اي واحد بيدافع عن حق الجمهور في مشاهده الافلام لازم يكون ضد هذا هذا الحصار وهذا الفرد من الشركات التجارية. السينما الهندية في الفترة الأخيرة أنا في رأيي أنها تعيش عصاها الذهبي من عشرين سنة أو عشر سنين الأخيرة بالذات من أول بداية القرن الجديد يعني أنها أول مرة تخرج هي أكبر سينما في العالم بتنجد ألف فيلم في السنة فطول عمرها أكبر سينما بحيث كم الإنتاج لكنها كانت محاصرة أو سينما محلية خرجت إلى العالمية طب برضو من خلال فنانين كبار من سنة 40 وسنة 46 في الأول دورة في مهرجان كان كان فيها فيلم هندية و و لكن ظلت سينما محلية حتى العشر سنين الأخيرة أصبحت سينما عالمية بكل معنى الكلمة يعني عرفت تطور موضوعاتها وتنوع أسلبها بحيث أنها وصلت إلى جمهور في كل مكان يعني. Much of your film has sort of been typified by the politics that you've portrayed there. Just going back to your your childhood, you were brought up in an extremely political family. Both your parents, I think, were part of the left movement in India at that point. They were artists uh, to boost. What was it like growing up, and how much of an influence did that have on your career choice, your path, your your philosophy that we see today, even on screen and in real life? My father, Kefi Azmi, uh, who was also a very well-known poet and a lyricist and a film writer, was a member of the Communist Party in India. My mother never became a member of the Communist Party, but till I was nine, I lived in a kind of commune of the, uh, of the Communist Party. So the place we lived in was called Red Flag Hall, where it was basically a, a large... Uh, <coughs> It was a large flat in which there were eight rooms. 
which were just 225 square feet each. And we had a common bathroom and a common toilet for eight families. And each family had four uh, members. But all of these were very committed individuals to the Communist Both. Party. You had people like Sardar Jafri there. You had people like uh, Kefi Azmi. And that's the atmosphere I grew up in. So there was never any money, because all the money that was being earned by my father was given to the Communist Party. And the Communist Party would give only 40 rupees a month to uh, look after the family. And so my mother had to go out and actually work, and that's how she went into theater. But what was very prevalent in the atmosphere all around was the idea and notion of social justice, that art should be used as an instrument for social uh, change, equality of men and women. And so I grew up actually believing that this was the norm. It was only when I, I think I became about 19 or 20 years old that I actually realized that uh, what I had taken for granted wasn't in fact true for all of India and that the situation was particularly different uh, for women. Now because I grew up in an atmosphere where my parents believed art should be used as an instrument for social change, I should have automatically become that kind of person, but I didn't. I was actually so involved in my movies and my career and everything that I was doing that it took up to... Yeah, sorry. فقالت ان والدها كافي عزمي هو شاعر كان شيوع كان في الحزب الشيوعي الهندي ولكن والدتها ما كانتش في هذا الحزب لكن الجو اللي نشات فيه بحكم الانتماء السياسي لوالدها كان في ايمان كبير بالعداله الاجتماعيه وبالسعي على العداله بالسعي الى العداله الاجتماعيه كهدف رئيسي لكنها وده وكذلك وكذلك الاستخدام الفن ان الفن مش معزول عن الاهداف الاجتماعيه والسياسيه وانما بيكون له دور في هذا في تحقيق هذه الاهداف ف لكن هي نفسها لما بلغت سن ال 20 بدات تفكر بشكل مستقل لكنها ظلت مؤمنه وظلت متاثره بفكره دور الفن في التغيير الاجتماعي. Sorry, you, you, you were saying in terms of your film, how it sort of transformed your being. And, and again, I don't know whether Fred Bhai knows, in one of your first films that you were, you were shooting in Calcutta, I think it was the Sham Benical film, when you went into the heart of, of this woman who you were portraying, I think she was a, uh, she, she was a maid uh, in the film. That in a sense actually gave your first sense of what inequity was about and, and transformed your sort of sense of, of being in that film. Can you share that? Uh, well, it, it was a film called Par by Gautam Ghosh. Have you seen that film? Good, yes, you have, yes. yeah. And uh, I was uh, portraying uh, a woman who had been thrown out of the village and she'd come to the city in search of work, Nasiruddin Shah and I. And uh, what I normally do when I try and portray a character, I try and find a role model for that character so that I can see and observe her. We were living in a, uh, in a very fancy uh, English guest house. And uh, I observed a woman who was the sweeper woman in that place. And I made friends with her. I started watching <coughs> the way she walks, the way she eats, the way she sits. And in the process, we became friends. Now, a couple of days into the shooting, so I was l watching her and then I was copying what she was doing. So we became friends in the process. And then she said, uh, Didi, will you come to my house? And I said, of course. And I went there and I was completely taken up by the kind of poverty that I saw over there. It was a small little 180 square foot room. There were eight members of the family living there. There was no water, there was no electricity, there was no light. And I had never, at such close quarters, seen such poverty. And I was completely amazed that somebody who was living in such adverse circumstances could actually have the generosity to become my friend. And then I felt completely seized by her. And I felt that if I went back to my air-conditioned home, 
without doing anything for the lot of people like her, then it would be a travesty of the trust that she had placed in me while we were becoming friends. I couldn't say, I will use you, win a national award in the bargain, and then leave you to continue the same kind of life. It would be cheating her. And that led me to, to joining a movement called Nivara Haq, which means the right to shelter, which works with slum dwellers <coughs> in uh, Mumbai. And that became the, the start of my social <coughs> consciousness, in a way. But along with that was another film, Mahesh Bhatt's Arth. I don't know if any of you have seen Arth. Has anybody <coughs> seen Arth? Okay, some have seen. Now what happened? If you haven't seen it, you must see it, see it because again, it's a defining moment in both cinema. It's, it's one of the finest performance uh, performances done by all three actors. And most importantly, Shabana will share with you is really the ending, which actually was transformative and pitched Shabana willy-nilly into the feminist forefront uh, uh, in, in India, even though she claims that it's part of her daily being and she doesn't necessarily see herself as a feminist per se. But I don't think they need any yeah. translations. I think no, everybody no. understands English here. Does anybody need translation? No, no, I oh, okay. Sorry. No, they're saying no. Hmm? No, no, this uh, gentleman. Yes. Yeah. How many people need the translation? Put up your hands. Only one. Sorry, <laughs> sir. For you, it's going to be a bit tough. Only one. Everybody can understand. Yeah. So, Arth um, was a film. This was in 83, 84. And Mahesh Bhatt and I were very close friends at that time, the director. And the film is a very simple story about a woman who, has, who is left by her husband for another woman. And then she finds it very difficult, but she puts herself together. And finally, when she becomes a person of her own, the husband comes back and says, I made a mistake. Will you take <coughs> me back? And so the person that I play says that if I had made the same mistake, would you have taken me back? She said, if, I, if I had an affair, would you then have accepted me back uh, as your wife? And he's honest enough to say no. And so I walk out on him. Now the distributors who were watching the film said, it's a very strong film, it's a very good film, but you have to change the end. Mm -hmm. It is not possible that an Indian husband says sorry to his wife and his wife <laughs> still doesn't accept him. This film will never see the light of day. You have to change the end. And so Mahesh Bhatt and I dug our heels in. And we said, we've made this film for the end. There's no way we will change the end. And we, uh, we released the film as it was. And suddenly, it became a huge success. It was economically also a very big commercially success. And then suddenly, I had women walk into my house not as fans to star, but in sisterhood, expecting me to resolve all their marital problems. <laughs> and I was really <laughs> frightened, because I was merely an actor. I had done a job, and I didn't realize that it would be so overwhelming, the response. But what that did for me is very sharply brought into focus, that oftentimes the audience doesn't make a distinction between the character and the actor. And having been brought up in the kind of house that I did, I realized that it is important for the artist to give much more back to the society yeah. for all the love and respect that you earn. And that's how my involvement with the women's movement started. And this is, that is a new proof that uh, for, for the Indians, Cinema, for, for the old people, the in, uh, films are entertainment, but for the Indians, it is part of their lives. That's right. It's not just uh, to, to, for, for the uh, for, to entertain after work, but this is part of the of, the, of life. Yeah. Is it part? Is that also an Egyptian cinema? No, is there no, a lot of politics in it? No, no. Even no. after the revolution.